Does God want us to be happy? Sure he does. But I got to tell you this morning, happiness isn't high on God's to-do list. But let me tell you something this morning, what is very high on God's to-do list. Let me tell you what's really high on his agenda. It's this, holiness. God wants us to be happy, sure, but more than anything, he wants his children to be holy. Look at what 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 says. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Sanctification simply means be, being set apart for God's holy purposes. It's that process whereby God transforms us into the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, We are mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. And as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, we become more and more like him. That is the essence of holiness, becoming more and more like Jesus. And, and that involves more than just a couple of trips to the altar, my brothers and sisters. Uh, so how does God sanctify us? How does this transformation of becoming more and more like Jesus evolve? Let me share a few ways with you. Some may surprise you. Sometimes, I believe, to make us more like Jesus, God will say no to us. <laughs> God will say no. Now, my uh, oldest grandchildren, the twins, turned five today. I got I to gotta make a confession as a grandfather. I say yes to everything my grandchildren ask of me. <laughs> you know, I, I, whatever they want, they going to get. We all weekend long, we, I mean, the, cel the celebration has been all weekend long for the twins turning five. And, 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 and I, I, I say yes. More, worse than me is Lolly. I mean, Lolly just gives them everything they want. And, and, and I say, yes, I, we, we spoil them. They are so rotten, you can smell them in Okarchi, Oklahoma. That's how, that's how badly we spoil these little rascals. Now, their daddies, on the other hand, <laughs> they often say no. Poppy says yes. Daddy will say no. Uh, you see, my son-in-laws are more interested in, in those little children becoming responsible adults someday. And so... They say no to my precious grandbabies. They say, no, you can't have that. No, you can't do that. No, you can't go there. <laughs> and it, oh, it's just such sadness it brings. <laughs> what I want to say to us this morning, God is not our grandfather in heaven. <laughs> he is our father in heaven. And to make us more like his son Jesus and to make us holy, to sanctify us, to purify us, God will often say, uh-uh, don't do that. Can't do that. Can't go there. Can't talk like that. Can't act like that. Look at this, 1 Thessalonians 4. For God wants you to be holy and pure and to keep clear of all sexual sin so that each of you will marry in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion as the heathen do. God called us to be holy and does not want us to live in sin. Anytime God says no or don't, there's a good reason for it. Second, to sanctify us, to purify us, to make us more like Jesus, God will discipline us. He will discipline us. Look at what Hebrews says. My dear children, don't shrug off God's discipline. Don't be crushed by it either. It's the child he loves that he disciplines. The child he embraces, he also corrects. God is educating you. He's treating you as dear children. This trouble you're in isn't punishment. It's training <laughs> in the normal experience of children. Only irresponsible parents leave children to fend for themselves. Have you ever seen unruly children? That's the first thing I say, where's their daddy? 
Where is their mommy? I don't blame the kid. So, so the Hebrew writer says, would you prefer an irresponsible God? We respect our own parents for training and not spoiling us. So why not embrace God's training so we can truly live? While we, we were children, our parents did what seemed best to them. But God is doing what is best for us, training us to live God's holy best. Simply put, child of God, if you're being disobedient, the Lord's going to take you to the woodshed. <laughs> he, God disciplines those that he loves. It helps us to become more and more like his son Jesus. Third, to sanctify us. Did you know God will allow trouble to come your way? <laughs> Trouble's good for us. Uh, God, God is not one of those helicopter parents. He doesn't swoop in and save us from <laughs> from the unfairness of life. In fact, Jesus clearly says, in this world, you will have what? Trouble. Trouble will help you. Trouble will help you become more like Jesus. In, in Paul's second letter to Timothy, he talks about some trouble he'd gotten into for preaching the gospel. Look what happened, 2 Timothy 4. He says, at my preliminary hearing, no one stood by me, Paul said. They all ran like scared rabbits, but it doesn't matter. The Lord stood by me and helped me spread the message loud and clear to those who had never heard it. I was snatched from the jaws of the lion. God's looking after me, keeping me safe in the kingdom of heaven. All praise to him, praise forever. <laughs> you see, sometimes God will allow the trouble the, 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 but it'll, make, it'll provide an opportunity for something greater to happen. One more thing I need to say about this, and I'll let you go. God will be with us every step of the way, using everything that happens to us for his good purposes. Throughout the scripture, we hear God saying to his children things like, I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. He promised his presence to Moses, to Joshua, to Gideon, and he promises his presence to you today. Amen.